Today we're getting towards the business end of our European Cup run. We're in the first knockout round against Lille. Only a couple of fixtures to review since the last time we met. The first of which was a 1-0 home win against Arsenal. They had a man sent off in the 46th minute, but we were already 1-0 up by that point. Luis de Cordova with the only goal of the game in the 44th minute. And of course, you beat Arsenal. What do you do next? You go away from home against Watford and perform dreadfully and get beat 3-0. Omani Burgess, Gustavo Diaz and Jonathan Aziz with the goals for Watford and what was a convincing 3-0 win for them. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in fourth position. We are now seven points off top of the table at Manchester City and level on points with fifth place Barnsley. So our form since the turn of the year has been pretty terrible in terms of the league. Uh, all our eggs are sort of going in this Europa Conference League basket. As you can see by looking out, satisfied our board were with the previous games. A D, an F, a C minus, a C, an E. Yeah, pretty disappointing in terms of results there. But we have got a couple of years in there as well. And our club vision is still going fantastically well, as you can imagine. We're only expected to avoid relegation after upgrading for a little bit extra transfer budget and wage budget. But uh, otherwise, everything else seems to be pretty good. In terms of the transfer activity, hasn't been much changes on the board side. They are obviously just more interested in terms of fees and wages. Whereas the fans have definitely improved over the course of the season. Happy with what we have signed and what they've been expected. Steve Hudson, I feel he's been disappointing yet still better than expected. He's on a D. He doesn't get any game time on fans. How are but anyway, that takes us to today. Of course, we are going to face Lille in both legs of the first knockout round. Lille currently sitting sixth in League 1, so the no mugs. And uh, it should be a difficult game. By the way, Brian Marie, he's absolutely unbelievable. I really wanted him. 71 million quid. Uh, no thanks. So we are at home in the first leg, which is a little bit disappointing. I think Lille got knocked out of the Europa League, which means... Yes, Europa League sides have entered the draw at this stage, the third place sides. Let's take a quick look. Let's see. Let's see what absolute mammoth challenges are coming our way. Livingston, <laughs> Lech, uh, Dundalk, Lille, Slavia Prague, Zenit, Malmo, Galatasaray. I think we've got a pretty difficult tie out of that. Lille, one of the best sides that's definitely been knocked out of the Europa League. Looks like they're going to come at us with a 4 2 3 1, a pretty attacking formation. Should our uh, stat pack actually be accurate? Let's get to where we're on side. Dzeverovic will start in goal, of course. Nuno and Bomba are starting centre-halves all the time. Walter and Rada or Korobov? We're going to start Korobov for the home time. Maybe Rada for the second leg away from home. Buckle in defensive midfield. Sokolov and Mauricio Chan in the centre of midfield with uh, Cruz, Zaratia and De Cordova leading the line. We want Jubilbis on the bench. Let's get to the game and see how we get on in this first leg. So they do indeed come at us with a 4-2-3-1. I do not recognise Richard Granger. I do recognise the name. He was at us with uh, Leeds United. Of course, he was only 17 or 18 years old. Had a decent season for us in the Championship. Not so good in the Premier League. And he's, he was with Leeds for quite a while before moving to Espanyol and then on to Lille. So at least one familiar face. It's always nice to see. 10 minutes in and we get our first highlight. It's Lille on the attack down the right-hand side. Bamba. Manages to get the cross clear and Cruz can bring it forward through the centre for us. He feeds it to Annabel Zaratia on this right hand side. He hasn't got many options in the box. He whips it in anyway. Deco Dover picks up the slops. Zaratia, Sokolov, Sokolov again. Ah, oh, Kovalenko with the save. The highlight is not over, so football manager has something else to show us. Mauricio Chan, buckle. Out wide to Korobov on this left hand side. He's got fantastic crossing if he can whip it in. Finds Deco Dover and Lewis. Deco Dover has turned to be a goal machine for us this season. That is his 21st goal of the season. I think he's also uh, second in the Premier League in terms of top goal scorers as well. So he's doing it in both Europe and the league. And Korobov once again turning provider. That's probably his like 12th or 13th assist of the season so far. Fantastic combination them two down that left hand side. And we go 1-0 up. Another highlight now. 20 minutes in. We are passing it out from the back. Bamba hits it long. Dekodova wins it. And Zarate is on the edge of it. I would love for him to get a goal. <sighs> He likes to get assists, but not goals. Free kick for us. Zerati plays it in. Bomber, our six foot six centre half, gets on the end of it, but can't get it on target. Corner for Lille. Are they going to get themselves back into this with nine minutes to go in the first half? Granger, don't do it, Granger. Richardson whips it in. Zaverovic with an easy save in the end. 
And again, doesn't look like this highlight is over. Delonzo receives the ball from Zverevich. Uh, on the right-hand side, Nuno plays it long. Zerati heads it down. Decord over is in behind again. Can't be Kovalenko. Me tongue, by the way. Doesn't hurt anymore. So hopefully I don't sound as silly as I've been sounding over the past few episodes. There we are, half-time. Stoke City 1, Lille 0. Passionately tell the boys that they're doing very, very well. I'm happy with the performance. Hopefully we can add a couple of more goals to give us a comfortable lead going into the second leg. First highlight of the second half comes 68 minutes in and it's Lille. Attacking down this left-hand side. I'm not even attempting to say his name. Granger picks it up in the centre. Switches the play to Luna on this right-hand side. We get a man out of it, but he goes for goal. And he hits the side net and has wing-backs like they do. 75 minutes gone. We'll look to make a change. Oh, there's a free kick for Lille in an attacking position. We'll take off from Mauricio Chan. We'll bring on Branko Milanovic. Korobov can come off for Radic Rada. And Chris Dubalbis can come on for Mario Buckle in defensive midfield. Oh, the free kick wasn't a highlight. That's fine. Zerat here with the free kick. He plays it in. Frankie Grand. Frankie Grand. I did not sub on Frankie Grand. I have made an error. Where is Frankie Grand playing? At left wing back. <laughs> That's fantastic. We're going to keep him there. We'll see. <laughs> if they score from the right hand side, I'm going to be gutted. Zerat here with the corner in. is cleared. Luna's coming down the right hand side. Don't do this to me, Lil. I made a mistake. Yes, take him down, Milanovic. We will take that. Radic Rada's probably pretty confused. He's like, Frankie Grand's getting on the pitch ahead of me at left wing back. Something has seriously gone wrong. As Lille attack again down the left hand side, we get it clear and Zerati and Dek Kordovic and pounce. Come on, Zerati, get your goal, son. Oh, Kovalenko with a save. We'll stick with this corner because we are a threat. Zerati to play it in. He does so. It is cleared by Matteo Jubilbis and Sokolov is there. Is he offside? I feel like he was offside, but it doesn't look like he is. Vitali Sokolov's ninth goal. Of the season puts us 2-0 up in the, probably the last attack of the game. And 2-0 uh, is far better going into the away leg than 1-0. <laughs> obviously. And there we have a boy. Stoke City 0. Uh, Stoke City 2. Lille 0. We'll uh, quickly play. Well, I think we've got a Premier League game in between these two fixtures. We've got Southampton away. I'll play that. Show you the result. And then we'll get to the uh, Lille away leg. I think it's fair to say the wheels have come off. <laughs> in terms of our league form. Another defeat. This time away from home against Southampton. Shane Ives, our former man from Leeds United, got two goals. Ricardo Bellucci with a brace as well. Annabel Zerati got two late goals for us to at least make it a little bit more respectable. There is Shane Ives, by the way. I think he was a youth player at Leeds we had. We didn't actually sign him. Oh, I mean, what can you do? At Europa Conference League glory, it has to be. <laughs> so we're going to have some issues in this game. Let's do a quick pick. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Walter Delonzo. Is our only registered right wing back. Now, that's my fault, obviously. We've got Stel Vargen unregistered because we just couldn't get him in, no matter how hard I tried. Now, thinking back, I wish I hadn't got Trefunovic in, who, by the way, is leaving the club. We have, he came to me basically wanting to leave, so I says, right, we'll transfer this straight away. Olympiakos came in with a £21.5 million offer, so they're getting £20 million plus for this sort of centre back stock, so. They, they are more than welcome for that. I'm not going to see the benefits of it. So Guido Bomber has been suggested as our best right wing back now. At least he is a little bit competent there. He's very defensive. Um, which obviously doesn't really play too well with our complete wing back. So I might just change him as a personalised role to maybe a wing back on defend. <laughs> just to see if we can get... It's going to be an issue. It is going to be an issue. But um, we'll have to play with it and see if we can get away with it. This is how we're set up for today. I think that's the only change. Yes, it is. It's the only change I was starting 11 from the last game. Bomber coming in at right wing back. Let's get into the game and see if we get punished down that right hand side or not. In fact, I think I'm just going to move him back. We'll move him back to the right back spot. I think it's, he's a little bit more comfortable there. Um, if we make him as a wing back. We'll keep him on support. It does lopside our attack a little bit. Maybe we'll put Zerati on a supporting role due to that. We'll swap. No one swap. We'll keep the Metzala on the right hand side to hopefully exploit that space that's been left by our usually bombing forward wing back. And we'll see how that goes. Let's get a kick off. And uh, hopefully, because this is sort of all of our eggs are in this basket now, get a comfortable win. So, uh, what idiot has just played that whole game, done the commentary, and hadn't clicked record? That is fantastic. Uh, let's. <laughs> Let's show you what happened. We drew 1-1. One, one. 
It was a thrilling game. Annabelle Zarate put us 1-0 up in front 17 minutes in. As we can see here, Zarate wins the ball in the midfield. Deck Cordova to Mauricio Chan. The ball's played through. He scores from a tight angle. Their right back scored pretty late on 87 minutes in. I can't believe I didn't press record. That is absolutely unbelievable. So this episode might be a bit shorter than you were expecting. The draw for the next round is only in a couple of days. So we'll stick around for that and I'll show you who we are facing in the next episode. So here we are then boys, the Europa Conference League second knockout round. It is the competition everybody wants to be a part of. We've got the likes of Bayer Leverkusen, Zenit, LESK, Krasnodar, Lokomotiv Moscow, Slavia Prague, Dundalk, Dynamo. Let's automatic draw it and let's see who we end up facing. So ideally, we will be away in the first leg. We'd get through it first at home. Of course we do. And we will face Lokomotiv Moscow. So one of the biggest sides still left in the competition. Uh, we're not going. We're not getting easy draws in this competition. Uh, obviously, compared to the rest of the sides, we could have got Dundalk, HJK, Slavia Prague. Uh, I would have been happy with any of those, but unfortunately, we do end up drawing Lokomotiv Moscow. We'll complete this draw, and then we'll take a look at the Lokomotiv Moscow, Moscow side. Luka Papa is listed as their best player. Um, yeah, he's not that great. They paid ten million pounds to Roma for him. At 32 years old, I would imagine. He's now 33. And ha, I don't think their squad is that good. Who's the top goal scorer? Kalin Bekov. Kalin Bekov. He's all right. 22 years old. He's probably better than the Italian. Uh, but again, not really on the same sort of level as our sort of players. In terms of best performer, Mago Medov, a right wing back. Who? Now, nah, we're not interested in him. 27-year-old Russian. He looks okay, but... Uh, Championship level is what I would say. So even though it's one of the more difficult draws in terms of the established European sides, I still think we should have what it takes to get past them. Is this not a two-legged thing? Maybe maybe the second leg just hasn't been organised. Or once you end up in the second knockout round, uh, I'm confused. I am very confused. But anyway, we'll find out the crack in the next episode. Obviously... Premier League sort of went by the wayside. This is how things stand after that game. Uh, we now sit in fourth position, still level on points with Barnsley, but we are now 10 points off Manchester City, sitting top of the table. And in terms of the leaderboard, we're not actually looking that great now after the last 10 games or so, how we've been playing. Um, it is what it is. We obviously knew that it was going to be a lot more difficult integrating the European competition with keeping our Premier League form intact. But I'm still relatively content with how the season is going. Zarate second in the assist level on points with Carizia from Barnsley. Third in terms of the average rating. And Lewis de Cordova, 14 goals in the Premier League in 26 games. Is okay for a 20-year-old English lad with potential to grow. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.